mind-blowing. Yeah, he was God in a body, but he was fully man too. And as a result of his manhood, his humanity, he began to worry and agonize, if you will, about this impending death. But he says to himself, what shall I say then? Shall I pray the Father to, to make this go away or me not have to go through this? He said, no, talking to himself as it were. For this cause have I come into the world. This is what it's all about for me. And so when you read this passage of scripture, it's, it's just so full of, of, of nuance and, and meaning and understanding that, that here he was on the one hand struggling with his humanity and, and being, as he said, I'm sorrowful. It kind of speaks to what the other Gospels uh, depict to us as his moment in Gethsemane when he asked that the Lord would remove that cup from him. He, he's, he's going through. But on the other hand, it's what the Hebrew writer says, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and despised the same. So, so it's like even in the midst of trial and trouble, you got to be able to look beyond the here and the now. You got to somehow be able to wrap your mind around the fact that he who is promised is able to do all things. He is able to do it. Don't ask me how. That's not my business. But just the fact that he promised, he is able also, Paul said, to perform it. So when you consider this uh, as he prepares himself to get ready to go to Calvary, it's such a moment because at this time, of course, now, this is the same setting in which Judas has a problem with him because Mary, uh, uh, Lazarus' sister, has come and anointed his feet. And, and Judas says, hmm, should not that have been used yeah, to, to raise money and, and give to the poor? When really, first of all, is it any of your business, Judas? Secondly, if you really have shown what was in your heart, here's somebody want to bless the Lord, and you got a problem with it. And then thirdly, you're going to act like you're his judge? You, that somehow he's not doing the right thing. Maybe that should have been used for a different purpose. And the scripture tells us that, that he said that in his heart, because, not because he cared about the people, but because he was a thief. And he was looking for some way to get those proceeds and skim off the top and have some stuff for himself. But Jesus said, let her alone. What she's done, she's done for me, and she's done it against the day of my burial. All of this drama, all of this stuff going on. And, and, the, and the, the Pharisees and Sadducees have said, you know what? All these folks are here to see him. We need to kill him and kill Lazarus too. These folks are going to undermine our position in the society. We got to, we got to deal with this. And, and, and one even prophesied, said, is it not better that one should die that the people might live? Didn't know he was prophesying that this is exactly what Jesus was going to do. That he was going to die that the people might live. Amen. So, so in, the, in the context of this, and I know it's just a lot of background stuff, but, but, but please consider that our Lord had come to a very monumental moment that really we can find some relevance to us. Because here we are now. We're in the midst of a culture and a society that thinks they know who Jesus is. They've heard about him. As Job said, I've heard about you by the hearing of the ear. But now mine eye does see thee. Ah, oh, there's something different. I'm not hearing about you just from old wives' tales and from campfire stories, but now I begin to know you in a very real and personal way. Some religions have relegated him to just merely being a prophet. Yeah, and they, they want to say that they believe in Jesus, but he, he's a, he was a great prophet. He was a great man. And think that they're doing him a service by saying that. Think that they're befriending you as a Christian by saying that, not realizing that really they're selling him far short because he was more than a prophet. He was God made manifest in flesh. Some, some Christians think that they, they are right when they consider him just simply only as the son of God. 
and as some, some Christian traditions have it, God the Son, and not understand that when you see him, you have seen the Father. For he has declared, I and the Father are one. And so the disciples were asked on one occasion, said, you know, who do men say that I am? And they said, well, you know, some say you're Jeremiah, some say you're Isaiah, some say you're one of the Old Testament prophets. Some say, some say that you're Elijah that was supposed to come back before Messiah. And so Jesus then reframes the question and says, but who do you say? Push pause for a moment, brothers and sisters, and consider that it's one thing for the people to have an opinion about him. But what really counts in this conversation is what you think about him. As, as, as an old song that Bill Withers put out in the 1970s, who is he and what is he to you? Some of y'all know that. Well, I digress. <laughs> but you understand my speech. He ought to have some special significance in your life. What has he done for you? Do you? Have you come to the point? Have you come to the point where you know the sound of his voice? Have you come to the point where you know when your master speaks and when he calls, oh God, when he calls you by name? Somebody said, somebody said that if he hadn't at that grave site said, Lazarus, come forth. That every dead person since Adam's time would have got up from the grave. Simply because he called. But my God, we all ought to know him and know him. He said, my sheep know my voice and another they will not follow. So ladies and gentlemen, all of that to say, God is impressing us today and has impressed me today about the importance of reaching out to the lost. We need to encourage somebody to come see a man. Oh, come see a man. Told me everything I've ever done. Somebody who knows me better than I know myself. Somebody that knows the way I think, even before I think it. Oh, my God. There's none like him. Now, as much as we try to be all that we should be as a congregation and as a church family and a spiritual family of believers, it would be wrong for us, hear me clearly, wrong for us to go out here and preach O'Fallon Apostolic Assembly. Because it ain't about us. It's not, we don't have salvation for anybody. We cannot save anybody. It's wrong for you to preach your preacher. Now I love that. I like when you talk well about me. Certainly much better than when you talk bad about me. But I don't want you going out of here telling people, oh you need to just come here Bishop Wells because he preached so well. No, 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 no. What I want people to experience when they come in these doors is experience the presence of the living God named Jesus. We want people to come in here and have an attitude and an experience that says, oh, I just felt him when I came into this house. Some of y'all were here last Sunday, and uh, one of Brother Charles' relatives, she said, I have not had a spiritual experience like this in a long time. Coming into the house of God where God's people have lifted him and have magnified him, they heard the book say, I inhabit the praises of my people Israel. When my people come together, where two or three of them are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. God said, that's what I want out of the people of God. So we don't want to preach ourselves. We don't want to preach our church. We want to preach Jesus and him crucified. We want him to be lifted up. We want him to be magnified. We want people to know the God that loves us all and the God that saves us. Let me pause for just a moment, if you don't mind. I don't know how often you might reflect on it, but from time to time I think about how when I was in the world, driving under the influences of drugs, uh, being out in the world, getting drunk, getting high, running around doing all kinds of things that really shouldn't be done, and yet, in all of the midst of that, God spared my life. Spared my life. I could have been killed. I could have been dead. And, and, and some might even say, rightfully so. But God, who was rich in mercy 
and the great love wherewith he loved me. My God, he spared my life and brought me to this great salvation. And so uh, it is so critically important that we emphasize him and not us. So Jesus is speaking to the people and, and he, uh, while he's there in the midst of them, he utters a prayer and he talks to God about how he's exceedingly sorrowful at this moment. And then there was a response out of heaven and it's coming and it sounds like the untrained ear, like just great thunder. And the people's attention has been grabbed and, and they, they, they understand that maybe this is not just thunder in a cloud because we don't see any signs of rain, but, but we hear what must be the voice of God. Jesus said, this voice that you heard was not for my sake, but it was for your sake that you might know that God is at work. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, God is at work even right now. Things are happening in our culture, things are happening in our world, things are happening all over the world that testify that what he has spoken is coming to pass. It is coming to pass. You think that this war between Israel and Hamas is just a, a one-off situation, just one of those things? Don't believe it. You think that the fact that the National, International Security Council of the United Nations voted almost unanimously against Israel the other day is just a happenstance? No ma'am, no sir. The fact that the Bible said that in that last day every nation is going to be against them. What we're seeing is the encroachment of those last prophecies being fulfilled. So God says to us that these things were said for your edification. It wasn't for his glory, but it was for the glory of God among his people. So, so my brothers and sisters, as we consider further, the Bible says Jesus almost does something of a U-turn here. He says, now the judgment of this world. Now is the judgment of this world. Now all of what God has planned down through the ages is about to be made manifest. Now the prince of this world is about to be cast out. Isn't it interesting? The devil is about to be dethroned. How? How is that going to happen? And then Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Now, verse number 33 tells you, this said he magnifying the death that he should uh, die. So by his death, the devil is going to be defeated. Now, in your mind, in my mind, naturally, how in, that, how in the world does that work? What seems to be your ultimate defeat really resounds to the ultimate defeat of the devil. He said, I'll tell you how. Because not only in his dying does he allow and make room for us to be saved, because he pays the price for our sin. He sheds his blood to cover all of us. Yeah, this is the love of God. Yeah, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This is that. But even in doing that, he says, now, if you take me on the cross and put me up on the cross and every soul that sees me on the cross, like when Moses put that serpent on a pole in the wilderness and Israel was told, if you look up at that serpent, you will live and not die. He said, everybody that sees me lifted up, everybody that sees me exalted, everybody that understands that I am their salvation. Everyone that does that, he says they're going to live. Every soul that looks upon him in faith is going to live. But here it is, brothers and sisters. It's your job and mine to lift him up. Your job and mine to exalt him. Don't you hear the prophet David say that God gave it to his mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together that when Jesus is lifted up when Jesus is magnified when Jesus is praised when Jesus is applauded when Jesus is lauded when he is commended when he is recognized he said I'll draw I'll draw I'll draw I'll draw your drug addicts I'll draw your prostitutes I'll draw your alcoholics. 
I'll draw your homeless. I'll draw your outcasts. I'll draw your rejected. I'll draw all men. I'll draw the host I'll draw all men unto me. Ladies and gentlemen, he said to us, your job and mine is to exalt him. And what we, what we do when we come to church, we're simply getting some practice. Well, yes, we're in, we're in a dress rehearsal about how to talk about Jesus. This is your safe space to praise him. This is your safe place to applaud him. This is your safe space to talk about how good he is. Because everybody in here believes the same thing that you do. But when you leave here, you got to go into the world and tell everybody, just like you did at church, do you know who he is? Do you know what he's done for me? Do you know how kind he is? Do you know that he's so loving and so merciful? Do you know that Jesus is a chain breaker? Do you know he's a liberator? Do you know he's a heart fixer? Do you know he's a mind regulator? He is what you need him to be. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, he said, I'll draw me. Have you lifted him up today? Have you lifted him up today? Have you told somebody, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, my enemies would have swallowed me up. But God, oh, my God, who's rich in mercy and the great love wherewith he loved me, He's made arrangements for me, and he cares for me on a daily basis, moment by moment. My God, new mercies I see. The Lord is good to me. The Lord is gracious to me. Is everything perfect in my life? No. Is everything just, just over the moon wonderful in my life? No. I've got tests and trials, but you know what? Through it all, he's right there with me. So the Lord said, the purpose of your worship, ah, the reason why, the reason why you come to church is not to show off the latest addition to your wardrobe. <laughs> it's not to show that somebody can say, ooh, girl, ooh, man, you look good. Have you lost some weight? Sometimes when people say that, they mean the opposite. <laughs> Just so you know. It's not so you can get a pat on the back from anybody. But you come here to get recharged. You come, yeah. I, I, need, I, I need to be in a church that's going to refuel me. That's, that's going to light my fire. Tell me something about Jesus that I can't wait to share with somebody else. You know, I've observed you sisters when you're, you're, you're in a marital relationship and you love your husband. Because everybody, I got to define it that way because everybody don't feel the same way. <laughs> but when a woman loves her husband, she's talking to sometimes virtual strangers and she'll say, you know what John did? <laughs> and the stranger's sitting there, who is John? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's talking about him like everybody ought to know who he is. Well, that's the way we ought to be about Jesus. Do you know what Jesus did for me? So that we tell people about the fact that we love him so and why we do. Oh, my brothers and sisters, if you ever pause and think about the fact that bullet that caught somebody else maybe had your name on it. Those, those, those drugs, date rape drugs and other stuff dropped in people's drink. Might have been being planned on your drink. Different plans and traps that the enemy might have set. And for reasons beyond your control, maybe a car didn't start and you couldn't get out the house on time. Not knowing that there was going to be a catastrophe up the highway. 
And in the times in which we live, folk who have lost their minds on the road, road rage, and, and they're carrying guns just to shoot another driver. My friend, the fact that we have been preserved is just another opportunity for us to praise him. So, thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Lord says some of y'all might have got a bad diagnosis, medically speaking. And, 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 and God knows we get troubled by that, and reasonably so. We hear from a doctor, a qualified expert in his field or her field, and they say, well, you know, th this is trouble, and we don't quite know how it's going to work out. But I want to tell you something today. The God that we, that's all right, and praise him. That's all right, praise him. Yes, my God, yes. See, everybody don't know what you're going through. Everybody don't know your trial and your story and your situation. But there is one. The Bible says he sits on a high, but yet he looks down low. He knows the way that we take. Sometimes, sometimes we hear those troubling reports and we get so disturbed we can't hardly sleep. Can't hardly rest. But somewhere in the midst of that darkness we can hear him say, my child, I got you. Woo! <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got you. Rest in me. Trust in me. Believe in me. Wait on me. It shall be well. It shall be well. It shall be well. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. And it's going to be so much more than just ringing a bell in the cancer clinic <laughs> and saying, I'm now cancer free. But God says, I want you to go out into the highways and the hedges. I want you to talk to people in your circle. I want you to share this good news with anybody who comes across your path and tell them what great things God has done for you. Is there a praise in the house today? 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 Is there a praise? Is there a praise? Is there a praise in the house today? My God, I worship you. Lord, I want to be in your presence. I want to feel your touch. I want to hear your word. I want to know your hand on me, Lord. Not just so I can have a good time, but so my soul can be filled. My spirit can be energized. My faith can be reignited and encouraged. Give me back my zeal. That passion that I had. Woo! I just wanted to tell everybody of how good a God you are. How great, how kind, how compassionate. My God, I heard you say in your book that the angel of the Lord encamps about them that fear him. Daughter Meandria had a car accident the other day, but here she sit today. Not in the hospital. Not braces here and there. But God, who is rich in mercy, said what the devil may have meant for evil. I allowed it for your good. I'm the one that keeps you. I'm the one that preserves you. I'm the one that blesses you. And how about this? I'm the one that heals you. I'm the one that restores you. I'm the one that revitalizes you. All oh, that men would praise the Lord. For his goodness. For his goodness. And his wonderful work. Unto the children of men. Oh God we praise you today. 
I don't know what they're doing at First United Methodist. I don't know what they're doing at St. Mary's Catholic. But I know here we got to praise. We got to praise. We got to praise. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw. I'll draw all men unto me. My God. So our job is to lift up Jesus. Not ourselves. Not anything human. Not anything natural. Not anything material. We take care of those things because they're, they're representative of God's kingdom. But God says, what I want you to exalt is me. For God has given him a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. To the glory of God the Father by him. He alone is worthy of all praise. He is worthy of all praise. Now listen, listen, listen. As I close today, I don't mind giving anybody their due. I, in fact, I like giving compliments. But I'm sorry there is some praise and there's some worship that belongs to him and him alone. And you can't have it. Oh! You can't have it. You know what? You didn't save me. You didn't deliver me. And you didn't heal me. You didn't restore me. You didn't preserve me. But he did, he did, he did, he did. Glory to God. Hey! Brought me back when I couldn't find my way back. Brought me out of darkness into his marvelous life. My God, who wouldn't serve a God like that? God says, now, if I be lifted up, I'll destroy the work of the enemy. I'll set free the captives. I'll open blinded eyes. I'll heal broken hearts. I'll restore. But I got to be lifted up. You got to lift me up. You got to lift me up. He says, I'll draw all men to me. Ladies and gentlemen, one thing that the Lord said to me very recently. He says, he is above all cultures. He's what might be said to be supracultural. That is to say, he is above and beyond cultures. And we're in that moment now where people are talking about our culture, our nation, nationalism, etc., etc. But Jesus says, I'm above all of that. Don't try to just make me and limit me to what your culture thinks that I should be. That this is the only way that I get glorified is the way your culture says. He says, I want you to know I'm above all of that. And consequently, there is no culture, there's no ethnicity that is beyond my reach. There is no people that are not going to be subject to me. I don't care who your people are, where they come from, what their nationality, what their traditions, what their background, what their customs, what their heritage. It does not matter. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men. All is ultimately inclusive. There's nobody left out. He says, if you do this work, if you do what I'm telling you to do, good God Almighty, White saints will draw black saints. Black saints will draw white saints. All will draw Asian saints, Native American saints, Eskimo saints, people from all, Chinese saints. God says, I'll draw them all. All I need you to do is lift me up. Rich folk, poor folk, in between folk, it doesn't matter who you are, what your situation is. So all I need is one thing, and that's for you to lift me up. Are there any people like that here today? 
to have a mind to say, Lord, I'm going to lift you up. I'm not going to just wait till church service comes and, and we hear walk in the light, the beautiful light. I'm not going to wait till they sing hallelujah chorus. I'm not going to wait till the, the beautiful song of the sun. But Lord, I'm going to lift you up. Lord, I'm going to look for a chance. Lord, I'm going to look for an opportunity to tell somebody, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody. Can't nobody. Can't nobody. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. The president can't do it. The would-be presidents can't do it. The governors can't do it. Doctors, lawyers, politicians, none of them can do it. But Jesus, Jesus and Jesus alone. He says, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. So my hope is this. Next Sunday when you come to church, you won't come by your lonesome. That you will have practiced somewhere along this week's time to talk to somebody about Jesus. Now I say bring them to church simply because this is where the Jesus people tend to meet. Amen. And we want to expose them to his presence. We want them to see that coming to church is not a boring experience. We want them to see that real people just like you and me go to church. And you know what? They worship God. And you know what? They enjoy it. Some of you can testify because before I got saved, I couldn't imagine having a good time without a blunt. I, I had to have some, some kind of alcohol or drink. I mean, that, that to me defined a good time. How you going to go someplace where there ain't none of that? And you walk away talking about, whoo, I feel so good. <laughs> oh, I feel so good. <laughs> I ain't smoked nothing. I haven't drunk anything. But oh, I feel so good. I feel so encouraged. I feel like going on. I tell you what, that's what we want to expose people to. The reality of serving the true and living God. God bless you this afternoon. Give God a praise one more time, if you will, please. Hallelujah. 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 You owe him. You owe him a praise. You owe him a praise. You didn't get through the last seven days just because you were smart. You didn't get through the last days just because you knew what what plots and plans to avoid but you are here because God was good to you if you're here today and you're not saved I want to make this opportunity for you to come as the saints continue to worship the Lord today prayer praise songs I want to create this opportunity for you come come now this, this coming represents coming to Jesus coming to him. If you're not saved, you haven't been born again of the water and of the spirit. You, 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 you haven't really understood why you have to repent. That is to acknowledge that you've been a sinner and you need to be saved. My God, my God, my God. You haven't been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you have yet to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost that makes itself evident by speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Can I tell you that everybody here who acknowledges that set of experiences figuratively sat where you are sitting right now. That is to say, they've had the same experience. That there was a moment where we too had to come. Where we too said, Lord, I'm ready to surrender. Is that you today? Young man, young woman? My sister, my brother, is that you today? That recognizes that Jesus is the answer to everything. If I come to him, God bless your daughter. Bless you. 